Good evening and welcome to our first family webinar series of the 2014-2014 year. My name is Brett Bruner. I'm the Director of Persistence and Retention and I have the opportunity to work with all of our family engagement programs here at Fort Hayes State University. Our presenters this evening are from the Office of Residential Life here at Fort Hay State to talk about transitioning to on-campus living. So without further ado, I will turn the floor over to Emily Meyer and Alyssa Mustard. All right, good evening and welcome, welcome to Fort Hayes State University. My name is Emily Meyer and I'm excited to be one of your presenters this evening. I am the McMinus Hall Director for the 2014-2015 school year and I'm going to let Alyssa introduce herself. Hello, I'm Alyssa Mustard and I'm the Graduate Assistant for First Year Experience and Learning Communities, but this summer I'm working in the resident life as a practicum, so I'm working with Emily on this webinar. First, we're going to give you a little bit of lingo that we use around residential life so that you know who you're talking to when you call our offices or um, when your students come back and talk about their HD or their AHD. Our hall directors are our master levels professionals like myself who live and work in the buildings with your students. One of us are on duty 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. So we're always accessible should your students be in need of assistance. We also have two assistant hall directors. These are our graduate students who are studying in the, our higher education student affairs program. They work in least and McMidas halls and help us manage our front desks, as well as serve in that duty rotation as well. We have two apartment managers who serve our Worcester and Stadium Place communities. These are also graduate students who are studying in the higher education student affairs program. and. Um, our assistant hall directors and apartment managers also work in our duty rotation. We also have approximately 33 resident assistants. These are undergraduate and graduate students who we train to be the front lines in the residence halls. These students live on the floors with your students and act as mentors and guides to our residents and are great peer resources for your students to connect with if they have questions or are facing a tough situation on their hall. Finally, we have our desk assistants. These are also undergraduate and graduate students who help staff our front desks in four of our buildings. Um, these students are also great campus resources and they li all live on campus as well. I should mention that if you have questions throughout our webinar, please feel free to type them in the chat box. We'll be taking a couple breaks throughout the webinar to answer those questions in a timely fashion. Uh, we have a couple move-in day dates for you all. For our LLC students, who are our Living Learning Community students, they will move in on August 13th between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Our traditional students will move in on August 14th between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. We will have our UPD officers um, out and about helping direct traffic. These are great campus partners to us and they'll be able to assist in giving you directions to get in the correct line so that you can unload and get your student checked into their room. We will also have assistance available with unloading your vehicles. Uh, we'll have volunteers on site to help you unpack and move items out of your car and up to your students' rooms. These will be other Fort Hayes State students and community members who are very excited to welcome you and your students to campus um, in order to help get your stuff to your right room, please put your student's name and room number on their belongings. That will help us um, identify any belongings that don't quite make it to their final destination. We do have some dates that we close our residence halls. These are um, fall break and winter break are what you're seeing right now on the screen. On November 21st at 5 p.m. our residence halls will close for fall break. We really encourage our students to go home during this time. Um, this will fall over the Thanksgiving break as well, so we, will, we want your students to be able to come home and stay with you if possible. If your student for some reason cannot travel home, if you live a significant distance away, we do have opportunities for them to stay in our halls over breaks. They will have to fill out an application which they'll get information about 
closer to that break. On November 30th at noon, we will be excited to welcome our residents back into our halls since they reopen from fall break. And on December 1st, classes will resume. Just a couple weeks later, on December 12th at 5 p.m., our residence halls will close for winter break, and they will be closed from um, that point until we reopen. You can see where the university is closed from December 24th to January 1st, so we all get a little break as well. Likewise, our spring semester closures um, function very much the same way. We'll reopen from winter break at, on January 18th at noon. January 19th, the university will be closed in honor of Martin Luther, the Martin Luther King holiday. And on January 20th, classes will resume. Spring break will start on March 13th at 5 p.m. and will last through the 22nd when students can return at noon as well. And then on May 15th at 5 p.m., a residence halls will close for the academic year. Um, your students will be free to leave any time before that, depending on their final exams. So make sure you communicate with them um, when that time is and when they need to be picked up or if you need to work on transportation for them. We have some suggestions for packing. Um, we have our don't bring list, but a bring instead list. So we don't allow air conditioners or ceiling fans to be installed in our residence halls. We suggest that if your student does want um, additional air circulation, that they bring an electric fan to plug in. Likewise, we don't allow extension cords, but highly recommend surge protectors. They function better. I use them all the time in my apartment. Uh, gas or charcoal grills are not allowed. However, a George Foreman grill is appropriate to bring for use in the kitchen area only. All of our residence halls have at least one kitchen area that your students will be able to use that George Foreman grill in. Um, hanging lights are on our don't bring list, um, but we recommend a desk lamp if your student would like a little extra light when they're studying. Nail screws and tape um, damage our walls. We definitely recommend 3M command strips. Those are something that um, my husband and I use in our apartment, and they work just fine for us. Um, please don't bring your pets. As much as we love them, they need to stay at home with you. Um, but we do allow fish tanks under 10 gallons. And we definitely recommend that those fish tanks go home with your student over the break so that your fish stay alive. Um, please don't bring multi-head plastic lamps. But again, a desk lamp will function just fine. Um, and we have wireless all throughout campus, so we don't need to worry about bringing any sort of wireless router. At this point, we're going to pause for any questions. If you have any questions about anything I've just covered, please type them in the chat box, and we will get them answered. All right, since we don't have any questions yet so far, uh, I will go ahead and talk to you about transitioning with your student. With the question for do suites have TV hookups, yes they do. In each individual bedroom, there is a TV hookup. Um, it is not necessary for your student to have a printer in their dorm room, but if they would like one, that is up to you guys. We have printers available for students in the library, as well as other places on campus that they're welcome to use. But the library, we are there's access to computers and printers as well. Alrighty. So transitioning with your student. You as a parent have the most insight into your student's behaviors and reactions. While college can be a very rewarding experience for both of your lives, it can also often present challenges that your student may have difficulty managing. So we have a theory, it's called the W curve, and this is a point where the student will go through these five stages. There's the honeymoon stage, the culture shock, initial adjust, adjustment, mental isolation, and then we hope that the acceptance, integration, and connectedness will soon come. This is what the W curve is initially supposed to look like. With the honeymoon stage, this is probably where your student is right now. There's excitement. They're getting ready. They're packing. Um, so the excitement to a new place. And then when move-in day comes, they're welcomed by staff and returning students. And this is where they're going to start realizing that they're going away from home. So they enjoy 
They're enjoying the sense of freedom, first time being away from home, possibly. The cultural shock can then come. Classes are starting, the academic rigor begin, different, differing expectations and teaching styles and of faculty. Um, for a lot of students, this is going to take some time to adjust to just because they're used to the high school ways. And so college, they don't realize how much difficulty they might have in college with their classes. Um, so some symptoms of culture shock that some students can face are changes in eating habits, sleeping habits. Um, they can just be homesickness. They, are, they can have homesickness, um, irritability, sadness, depression, feeling angered, self-doubts in their self, and just really confused if they should have maybe came to Fort Hayes. But this is where we can help them. Um, as the residence halls, we have RAs that are trained to help the students and the hall directors. So there's a ton of people that we have on Fort Hayes campus that so we can help your student kind of get involved with things on campus. So the initial adjustment, developing comfort through transitional skills. This is where they're finding a new way, they're finding their new culture here on campus, and they're just learning what's working for them and what's not. Mental isolation, I, to me, this feels maybe at Thanksgiving break, we're allowed to go home. And so when we come back, we might feel a little homesick already, and they want to get home. And so pushing through that last two weeks of school before, before finals um, is really crucial. And we hope that finally, soon after, the acceptance of feeling at home, we want this to be their home. Uh, Hayes is a great place, and we want them to feel welcomed and enjoy their time at Fort Hayes. So recovering from the culture shock is handled differently by everyone. Each student has their own unique circumstances, backgrounds, strengths, and weaknesses that need to be taken into consideration. Some helpful suggestions for this with your student is just helping them understand that they're not the only one going through this. Every student has their own ways of processing the transition to college, and so just reminding them that everyone's going through it in their own different way. Um, Remind your student that you're just a phone call away. We are so lucky with the technology that we have today that we can Skype, FaceTime, text, email, Facebook, and so much more to keep in contact. So if you're sending them a text once in a while or every day, you guys, between the two of you and your family, will just have to learn what works and what doesn't work. I know there's students that every Sunday they talk to their parents and that's what they do. Um, for myself, I text my parents on the daily. So just learning what's going to work for you and your family. Help them understand that eating well, exercise, and getting enough sleep is the best thing for them. Uh, but remind your student to have fun and take time to relax and enjoy their college experience. College is a transitional stage for you and your student. It is not going to last forever. This theory can help you better understand what your students may be feeling as they transition to college. So if there are issues with uh, your roommate or just some issues that you need your student to take care of, we kind of have a process before to kind of help you guys through. Um, speaking to your RA would be the first step. Uh, they're going to have the best insight of what to kind of help you fix the problem. If it's a roommate issue or um, room adjustment, just um, starting with them. If the issue doesn't get resolved, uh, the hall director would be the next person to speak to. Um, if, if, it does, if it goes longer than the hall director, we would suggest talking to the assistant director of residential life, Marika, or director Rebecca Peterson. At this time, we'll take some questions and answer the questions we do have. Um, we had a question about if a student is in band. Um, I failed to mention that we do have some uh, special populations who have um, special circumstances that require them to move in early. So Angelo, your student should ha be receiving an email from the band director. And on the date that they are slated to move in, our uh, students can move in from 10 to 1 or 4 to 7. 
those are, um, again, just for our special population students, band students, some of our fall athletes. Um, those students will be communicated with directly, and um, they can move in from 10 to 1 or 4 to 7 on the days that their coaches or directors indicate. Um, the next question is, is it necessary for my daughter to pack all of her clothes when moving to Hayes? Um, I would definitely say it depends on whether your student can come home and exchange out wardrobes throughout the year. Um, it's definitely not necessary to bring everything. There's not enough room for everything. Um, but definitely bringing the clothes that she ne will need for the fall, as well as probably a light jacket. Um, also, we offer free laundry on campus. And so she will be able to do laundry as much as possible. So there isn't a need to have three weeks' worth of clothes when you can do laundry um, as often as you need. Do we have any other questions before we move on? All right. So one of the awesome things about Fort Hayes is all of the opportunities to get involved. And some of the reasons we want your students to get involved is our involved students tend to get better grades when they have a couple more things to manage, like a club or organization and a job. They tend to manage their time better. And so with that time management, they spend a little more time studying and they get better grades. Um, relief from stress. It's awesome to be able to go out with friends and do something you love if that's going to the rodeo or um, affiliating with one of the religious groups on campus. It's a great way to relieve stress. It also helps your uh, student get a standout resume. All of the extracurricular involvement um, will really add to their resume when they are done here at Fort Hayes State um, and when they're looking for that first job or looking to go to grad school. It also really helps our students expand their horizons and meet new students um, and then make new friends and really connect here um, at Fort Hayes State. We have a couple other questions that just came in that I'm going to address quick. Yep. If your student is signed up for a club with an early move in, oh, okay. Um, for the question about your student being signed up for a multicultural club that you're unsure of, please contact Amber White in our Center for Student Involvement. Um, she will definitely be able to answer that question for you and uh, be able to work out. Um, uh, is there a bus service, train service, or airline service from Hayes to Denver? Um, we do not have. Oh. Yeah, we do not have a bus service currently, um, but we will be re having our airport, our local airport, reserviced as of August 1st, and that airline will serve um, our students and be able to connect them to Denver. So once they get to Denver, they can connect to pretty much anywhere else um, that they'll need to go. Is there a shuttle service to Walmart from campus? My daughter will not have a car. Yes, we have a shuttle service called Tiger Transport that runs three days a week. Um, that schedule will be posted at the beginning of the year along with the pickup location, which is um, just across the corner from Weast Hall and Heather Hall. Yep, and again, the, the shuttle service and the schedule for this next school year will be posted um, when our students return to campus and we get that finalized. Our opportunities to get involved on campus um, in the residence halls, we have hall councils, residence hall association, the national residence hall honorary. We have RAs, which are the residence assistants and desk assistants. At Fort Hayes, we do have a few Greek life organizations. We have a ton of community service organizations, student clubs and organizations, and intramural sports. At Fort Hayes, 
uh, the intramural sports has, I think, over 150 opportunities. Um, there's more out there than just playing sports. There's video game competitions. So we have a ton of opportunities for students to get involved on campus and in the residence halls. We offer care packages for students. You as a parent can order these for your student and they're ma mailed directly to campus. Um, you can go to the Fort Hayes website in the residence hall uh, page and you can type in res life care packages in the search bar and it'll bring up this at the bottom here. It'll have the care packages, linens, and Tiger Pride projects, products. And this is where you can go online and order care packages as well as lin linens for your student's room. We have two suggested readings that we would like to offer you as a parent that if you would like to go out and search them on Amazon or somewhere that you can read up on transitioning with your student. The first one is Guide to Supporting Your Student's Freshman Year by University Parent. Um, this was just produced in 2014. The guide is the product of this experience. There is no cookie cutter approach to parenting a college student. The parents share universal concerns, questions, and joys with room throughout for adding your own notes. The University Parent Guide to Supporting Your Student's Freshman Year can be personalized and turned to again and again during your student's first year of college and beyond. The second one is Letting Go, a Parent's Guide to Understanding College Years. Long-time best-selling guide for parents on coping with the emotional and social changes of college. This covers safety, academics, health and wellness, stress, and more. Authors are college administrators as well as parents. On our screen now is the contact information for the Residence Life Office, um, our main office number, our fax number, our email and website. You can also call the university at 1-800-628-FHSU. Um, I also got a little more information about transportation while I took my break. Um, we do have a Greyhound stop here in Hayes, and so if that's an, something that you and your family are looking into, that's an opportunity. There are also Amtrak stations in Garden City and Dodge City. So a little bit of transportation to get there, but Amtrak is also an option um, if your student can arrange transportation to or from uh, campus to those cities. And at this time, we'll welcome any more questions that you have. Please feel free to add any more questions while I finish this up. Um, I would like to say that this is our first of five uh, sessions. The next one will be around September, October, and this will be student involvement. The CSI office will be hosting this, um, giving you options of how to help your student get involved on campus. We had a question come in about a daughter contacting her admissions counselor if she needs or wants to. Absolutely. Our admissions counselors love to keep in contact with our students and see how they're doing once they're here on campus and really stay connected to them as well. So that, uh, that resource doesn't go away once your student starts classes. They're here um, for your students as well. All right, well, this is Brett again, and I want to thank Emily and Alyssa for hosting our first family webinar series about transitioning to on-campus living. Um, we are posting my email address. Uh, we've got a couple more questions here. I'm actually going to turn the mic o back over to Emily to answer some questions about microwave um, and the lamp. But in the meantime, um, 
Alyssa has just posted in the chat box my email, which you all probably would have received your confirmation email from my email. Um, once again, our staff is here to support all of our parents and families. If you have any questions as you prepare for move-in day, um, you didn't get Alyssa and Emily's contact information, you can always, or if it maybe doesn't pertain just to residential life, you can contact us and we can assist you um, in the support of all of our families. So. And here is Emily. All right, we had a couple questions come in. Um, why can't you bring a multi-headlamp? Um, this policy is kind of twofold. The first is that um, two kind of a bulb can melt the plastic, the decorative plastic lamp shade on it. And so um, that um, creates a mess and a fire hazard. As well as if you have, your student has a poster or something hanging on their wall that falls onto the lamp, that can also be a fire hazard. And so it's really a, a safety issue that we, a safety issue why we don't allow multi-head lamps. Um, and then microwaves, yes, microwaves are available. Um, and McMinus, they're available on, um, in all of our kitchenettes on the third through sixth floor. They're available in Weiss in the kitchen area. In Custer, they're available in um, each of the kitchenette lounge areas. And then in Tiger Place, they're also available in the kitchen. Thank you for the thank you. Um, which halls have kitchenettes? All of our halls offer some sort of kitchen amenities that include a microwave and a sink and a stove and oven. Um, they're all set up just a little bit differently because all of our um, all of our communities are unique and have different needs. Um, the amount of space between the bunk beds and the wall. Yep. We will be emailing some of that information out. And if you would like to email um, either myself directly or the Residence Life Office, we will be able to answer that question more in depth for you uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, microwaves are allowed in your residence hall rooms as long as they are under 700 watts. Oh, this is a good question. The, the thing I'm most glad I brought from home. Um, I remember. I'm going to let Alyssa answer the thing first. I brought a ton of pictures. My rooms have always been decorated with hundreds and hundreds of pictures from home that help me remind me of my family, my friends, and things I did. But then pictures of my freshman year and sophomore year and so on went on the wall and less came home. But pictures from home and different things that remind you of home. I would echo that. Um, for me, it was definitely pictures, um, especially with my younger sister and the kids I used to babysit for that I had gotten in um, going away presents when I came to college. Um, we had another question, which floors have kitchenettes in McMinus? Those are the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth floors, but those floors are accessible to the entire McMinus community. So if you have a student who is living on the first or second floor, they absolutely can go upstairs um, and use those kitchenettes. Um, purchasing fall parking passes, those will be available once your student moves in. Um, we have a little bit of a grace period with our university police department as, well, as far as um, getting those purchased within the first week so that all of our cars are registered on campus. We saw is very similar to McMinus in room layout and having a built-in desk area. Um, the beds are just a little bit different, but in general, a week's room will look very similar to a McMinus room. Um, and there is a recently renovated kitchenette in Weast down on the main floor in the community area that they are finishing up, and we are very excited about um, that area gets a lot of use, and so that 
space will be a great community space for WEAP this fall. We're going to hang out for just another minute in case there are any last minute questions. Um, otherwise, we want to thank you all for joining us and wish you a good night. Yep. The floors in McMinus that have kitchenettes are the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth floors. And our students who live on the first and second floors are more than welcome to go up and utilize the kitchenettes on the upper level floors. Um, the floor plans for the first and second floor just don't allow us to put kitchenettes in those communities. Any question about what items are in each suite? Each bedroom comes with the a bed, a desk, and a dresser. And then in the common area in the suite is a couch and a table, like a small dining table and chairs, and then a mini fridge and microwave. We have a question about recommending if your daughter should bring a trunk for storage. Um, it's kind of up to her. Um, I can definitely see the benefits of having some extra storage space, and then you can also use that trunk for a seating space if you want to get a pillow for the top of it or a table space. So it could definitely be an added bonus for your room, but a trunk could also take up some extra floor space. So I definitely think that it's going to be up to your daughter as far as what she wants. Um, as far as room. And yes, there is a chair for the desk in the suite. Um, is it best to loft the bed? It's really up to your student whether they want to loft their bed or bunk their bed or leave it where it is. Um, we definitely recommend that your student talk with their roommate um, to decide what sort of room layout they want to have. Um, yeah, it's going to be up to your student and their roommate. Um, we also, you also have the opportunity to move the height of your bed so that you can add some underbed storage if you want to use some plastic bins or store that trunk underneath the bed. Um, those are options as well. You also have to consider if you loft a bed that you have to climb into it. I lofted my bed my sophomore year and then sprained my ankle at soccer practice. And so it was a, a unique challenge for me to get into bed um, for the first week or so with that sprained ankle. Alicia, I'm wondering if you can clarify your question. Um, moving is a one-time only option, correct? Can you clarify that a little more? I'm not quite sure what you're asking. We are double checking our loft policy right now, um, but as far as changing around the dynamic of the room, they can. Um, I'm just waiting out for an answer on our loft question. All right. So. Um, 
if your students want to loft their bed, that request needs to be in before August 1st. Otherwise, we will accept them starting August 18th for two weeks. Those are the only, um, between now and August 1st and August 18th for two weeks right after that, are the only time we will accept a request to loft beds. Um, otherwise, there won't be any lofting um, throughout the rest of the year. But if you, your student like, would like to unloft their bed throughout the year, we will accommodate that. Um, we are going to get the height on the loft and send that out, um, but you can definitely fit a mini fridge underneath it. It is under, the loft request is under the Saxon Forms part of the Res Life website. So that's how your student can submit their request um, between now and August 1st. So you've got a couple weeks to, to get that in. Um, you should be able to see the link in the um, the link in the chat box, and that's where you'll be able to go in and um, request that loft loft form. Um, and yep, the beds in suites do adjust to allow for extra storage underneath. Um, yeah, we will find out that exact height and let you know um, both for those the beds in the suite, how tall they can go, and um, how tall a bed is not lofted. So we'll get that information and email that out to all of you who have registered for the webinar um, so you have that information. Um, the only residence hall that has a curfew is Custer Hall, and that is um, only for our Kansas Academy of Math and Science students. So. Um, Otherwise, uh, our students are adults and we treat them like that. Um, for the semi-private bathroom, those are located in our suite style building. And that means that your student will have two to three suite mates. And between um, those three or four students, they will share two bathrooms in their suite. So um, they'll probably share their bathroom with one other person, um, so that's semi-private. It's not um, what you think of when you think of a traditional residence hall bathroom. Um, how do you get your child's address? Um, go to our website, www.fhsu.edu slash reslife. That will give you the addresses for all of our residence halls, and you will just need to ask your child what their room number is. Um, and you can address it, send it with their name, and then the, the mailing address and their room number, and we will make sure that the mail gets to them. Um, we sh you should also note that there are two different mailing addresses. One is for the U.S. Postal Service, and the other is for UPS and FedEx. So you will want to double check the address depending on which method of sending things to your child you are using. Okay, so in Weast Hall, our floors are divided by gender, and so um, the floors are not co-ed. So if you have a daughter, she will be housed with other females on her floor, and those are female bathrooms. And if you have a son, he will be housed with other males, and the bathroom on that floor will be male. So there are no co-ed bathrooms in Weast Hall. Um, if you're 
student has a guest of the opposite gender, there are public restrooms available in all of our halls. Um, they are encouraged to go down and use that restroom that aligns with their gender. I think that is the end of our questions. Again, we want to thank you all for joining us tonight for our first webinar in our series. Be on the lookout for some more emails from Brett regarding future webinar webinars, and we look forward to seeing you all on campus. Um, we had one last question. Can little brothers or sisters stay with the, your student in the, in the residence halls? Yes, they can stay. We, um, our rule is that your student must get approval from their hall director in order for that sibling to stay, just so that we know who is in the building. An awesome weekend for this is our resident hall association's Little Sibs weekend, which I believe coincides with family weekend. So be on the lookout for information about that. We would love to have those younger siblings stay with us over that weekend. <laughs>